that we don't have pictures to go with, but we've got the, uh, the muscle is resting, the sarcomeres are resting, the frontal lobe of the brain, okay, so go way back, you know, frontal lobe movement, frontal lobe sensory, frontal lobe of the brain decides you're gonna throw a ball or you're gonna kick a trash can or whatever you're gonna do. And, uh, you know, so those signals are sent and um, they're, they're sent through motor neurons, individual nerve cell processes of the motor neurons, having to innervate the right parts of the right muscles in the right order so that you throw the ball accurately or you, you know, make the turn properly on the snowboard, whatever it is you're doing. And uh, the action potential gets to the end of the nerve cell process, the acetylcholine is released, that conducts the action potential across that space called a myoneural junction and uh, whoops, into the, uh, the muscle cell. It spreads across the sarcolemma into the transverse tubules. You've got all this written down, right? Mm -hmm. Sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium. Calcium binds troponin. Uh, troponin pulls tropomyosin out of the way and the myosin head, already holding an ADP and a phosphate from a previously split ATP, binds actin. As soon as the head binds actin, it releases the ADP and the phosphate. At that moment, when the head releases when the head releases the ADP and the phosphate, the potential energy becomes what? Energy. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, yeah. So that energy was there stored in that neck and it's realized it's used energy of movement kinetic energy okay so the head binds uh, actin ADP and the phosphate are are released the potential energy becomes kinetic energy the power stroke occurs looking at the angle through the neck Binding, releasing ADP and phosphate, power stroke, seeing the difference in the angle through the neck. Now to break the cross bridge, another molecule of ATP has got to come in and bind the head. Cross bridge breaks. That ATP is immediately split. And now the head holding the ADP and the phosphate swings up, recocked repowered, re-energized. Where's the energy now? In that neck. So when that, my, when that ATP binds the head to break the cross bridge and the ATP is immediately split, the energy is in, in the neck ready to be realized as we start into our next cycle. Now, something I've got to stress because this is, honest to God, this is the first real functionality of this entire semester. Can you go back to like <coughs> line one, page one of the lecture notes? Anatomy and physiology, structure and function. And it's the functional stuff that, that's cool. Of course, you love it or you hate it. The anatomy is easy because rote memory, while it's boring and dull, it's easy. It's very, very easy. You know, dogs can memorize hundreds of commands. Dolphins can memorize, like, I don't know how many. It's ungodly how many commands they can learn and memorize. So it's the lowest level of learning on the, on the tree. Understanding is much higher in terms of levels of learning, and therefore it's easier because it's more fun. But in terms of cognition, it truly is more difficult. Some people like anatomy more. Some people like physiology more. But where I'm going with this is you not you specifically or you specifically, but as a group, as a class, have to ask yourself how you're studying. You've been doing a lot of memorizing. Now you've got to understand. And that's a different type of, of learning. It's a different type of studying, perhaps. So just, just you know, don't, don't dwell on or lose sleep on it. Just be aware of it, realize it, and, and, and do, do whatever's necessary. When we start with physiological processes, which is now the end of 201, I tend to give you steps because that makes it manageable. But you have to transition from steps to a story. 
So if I say, what'd you do last night? You're not gonna say, well, step one, I took a chicken breast out of the freezer and put it in the microwave. Step two, I set the microwave to defrost. <laughs> step three, I you're just gonna tell me the story. Or if you say, I watched the movie last night. Oh, really, what'd you watch? Was it, and was it good? You're just gonna tell me. You're not gonna say, well, step one, the, 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 the person went into the flower store and bought a dozen roses. Step two, they got in the car and drove across town and delivered them to somebody they kind of liked. Step three, they asked that person if they wanted to go have ice cream. Step four, the person said no. Step five, the person that asked cried. You're not gonna tell me like that, you're gonna tell me a freaking story. So we like steps in physiology because they make things manageable, but you gotta transition from the steps to a story. Like tell your friend how this works. I just put the numbers there for you guys. And where I put the numbers is arbitrary. When I do this on Monday for the class that missed it yesterday, I don't know if we'll have 10 steps or 15, because there aren't any steps, okay? Cells don't know when they finish prophase and begin, met wait, 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 I'm almost through with prophase. Okay, I'm in metaphase. What were you saying? We just impose the steps on the process. They're made by people, they're made up. Okay, so you work hard to be able to tell your friend, remember that's part of the point of a study group, Tell me the difference between mitosis and meiosis. And as I do that, if I have to use my book, my notes, that's fine. But when I figure it out and I put it into words to the point that you finally say, oh, now I get it. Learning just occurred for me too, the process of explaining it to you. All right, guys, have a nice weekend. Let's hope we do not get any.